Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. Well, speaking of segments, we got to do a quick uh, look at NXT here. Then we'll do more emails for Lance, text messages, 425-780-7566. So um, I would say that the first, the first hour of this show sucked. And the second hour of the show, I thought, was, was pretty good. Like so, the indie you went to. Kind of, yeah, actually. So they they brought in Cedric Alexander and Ashanti the Adonis, okay? So if you watch Raw and SmackDown, you know who Cedric is and you know who Ashanti the Adonis is. But they've been brought into NXT, and, like, they're already, like, they've been there a week, and the opening segment is Trick and Cedric and Ashanti, and they're doing this big, long thing, and it appears like Cedric is a baby face, Ashanti maybe is not. Ashanti just wants to hang out with the women. But it's like, they've just jumped right into this thing with the, the former world champion. And it's just too fast. It's like, nobody cares about Cedric. Nobody cares about Ashanti. They care about Trick, but they don't care about what's going on with these guys. Because they just threw them right in. It's like, they didn't even establish the characters or anything. So, anyway, it ends up with, uh, you know, Tr Ashanti's yelling at Trick. Trick gets mad, says, I'm not third, I'm first around here. This makes Cedric mad that Trick thinks he's better than him, so he challenges him for a match for later. We had uh, Ethan Page arriving. And I don't know, you don't watch this show, do you, Lance? Generally not, no. Generally not? Well, you know what I absolutely hate about this show? And at this point, I think that they do it sometimes just so I'll complain about it every single week. Why is it so hard to identify people? Why is it so hard to put a graphic on the screen? And the one that made me so angry is, first off, they had this they had this team. I can't even remember off the top of my head their names because they've been on TV like three times in the last three months. And it was a team where every week they were on their way, but they wouldn't actually tell us what their names were. They never put graphics on the screen, not not their individual names or their team name. So Ethan Page arrives, and there's these two guys. No graphics. No identifying graphics as to who they are. So I'm trying to write, like, what's going on. And it's like, I, I, what are their names? So I'm irritated. They never show us. And so then later, there's another segment with three women backstage. I'm pretty sure one of them is Carmen Petrovich. Pretty sure one is Lola Weiss. And I have absolutely positively no idea who the third one is they don't say her name they don't put a graphic on the screen I'm like now now my blood is boiling and then you want to know what really set me off so later they have a segment where ethan page the champion goes to talk to ava and he runs into mr stone and stevie turner well, of course, they put up a graphic for Mr. Stone. Do you know how long Mr. Stone has been in NXT? Five years, maybe? 2019. Five years. They put a graphic up for a guy mm -hmm. who has been with this company doing storylines for five years. He gets a graphic. But the tag team that showed up a month ago, who's had like two or three appearances at most, nope, everybody knows who they are. Everybody knows who the ninth athletic blonde is that's hanging out with Lola Vice. I'm like, God. Oh, my. Is this, why is this so hard, Lance? I don't know. Why? But I think it's made harder because everyone just has a first and a last name. We need more Jake the Snakes, Macho Man Randy Savage, in my opinion. And then, yeah, Brandon goes, was the third woman Sol Ruka? Okay, here's the thing. And I think it actually might have been. Because later they did a match, and this is another one. I, I'm, just, I'm doing nothing but complaining about this show. But like, They did Lash Legend and Jakara Jackson versus Sol Ruka and Carmen Petrovich. And we're like a minute into the match, and it suddenly hits me. Oh my God, that's Sol Ruka. 
Because for those of you who have never seen Sol Ruka or this show in general, all they do is hire athletic people. Okay? And so there was a time in WWE where, you know, they had maybe a dozen women on the roster. This was before the women's evolution. It was they maybe had a dozen women. And it was and I was always like, do you all have to have a different color of hair? This woman's hair was blue. This woman's hair was green. This woman's hair was purple. This woman's now hair... you're begging for it. Yeah, and I am now because now I now I figured it out. Now they've got like I swear to God a dozen women, and they are all athletic blonde women. Okay, now Sol Ruka stuck out because Sol Ruka had a surfer gimmick, and she had like you know frizzy curly you know it looks like she just came in from the ocean. You know, her look made her stick out. I swear to God, this week they straightened her hair. She has bone straight blonde hair now. And I'm watching this match going, wait a second, that's Soul? She looks now exactly like everybody else. The one thing that differentiated her from all of the other blonde athletic women, they straightened her hair. How many times have people make fun of me for my blonde rat tail? At least you knew it was me, brother. Hey, I had that reverse mullet for the YWF. There was no mistake in who the beast was. But anyway, now let's talk about what was actually good on this show. So, they're doing a fun storyline with Ren Sinclair and the No Quarter Catch crew. And, you know, the funny thing is, Charlie Dempsey is Regal's son. And, uh... Regal has so much charisma, but his son, like, has absolutely none to speak of. So they're trying to give him charisma by making his... The storyline is he thinks that he's a mobster like Tony D. And so, you know, they 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 killed off um, Damon Kemp, put him in the trunk of a car. But Ren Sinclair saw it. And so now she wants to be in the no-quarter catch crew. They don't want her, but she's basically threatened... If I don't start winning some matches, wink, wink, I don't know who knows what I'll say. And so, you know, Charlie doesn't want her there, but he has to help her win and everything. And I'm watching this match with her and Carly Bright. And the match itself isn't very good at all. It's like choreographed and they're going 9,000 miles an hour. But Charlie on the outside has to, like, you know, prevent Carly from winning by the rest back. He has to put the foot on the ropes or whatever when Ren almost gets pinned. And then he finally helps Ren win. And she rolls outside. She's all excited and happy. And... This Charlie Dempsey is like, it's the most preposterous, overdramatic, overacting you've ever seen. He's like a guy on vaudeville. But I really thought about it, and I was like, that was kind of Regal's character, actually. So maybe we're on to something right here. But anyway, I like that storyline. And then they had a Thea Hale sit-down interview about the Roxanne match, and she's awesome. She's a great worker. She's a great interview. She's only 20, Although she's about to be 21, so she's been here going on three years now. So she'll be in the main event, or she'll be on the main roster inside of the next decade. I, yeah, by the next decade. By the time she's 30, I think they'll finally call her up. Her and Roxanne. And then we had uh, Trick and Cedric, which was a struggle of a match, but they made their way through it. And then uh, Pete Dunn lays out Trick, and so it looks like we got multiple, uh, you know, matches here for Trick down the road. We had the. Uh, uh, main event, the Rascals. For those, if you don't watch NXT, but you know all these characters, the Rascals, all three of them, against Axiom, Nathan Frazier, and Javon Evans. Okay? Now, I will say that the setup for the match was actually... So, I mean, it was so stupid I had to watch it twice because I couldn't even believe my eyes. So what happens is, earlier in the show... Axiom and Nathan Frazier, you know, they're they're backstage kind of arguing or whatever, and the Rascals walk up. And so Trey asks MSK, hey, did you guys ever lose those tag team titles these guys got? And Wesley says, no, in fact, we did not. We were tag team champions, but we never lost the belts in the ring. And Frazier, one half of the tag team champions, he goes, that match would have been insane. And Trey says, what do you mean would have been? I mean, we can still do that match. And so, like, they get all excited. And Wes says, yeah, we could do that match tonight. 
And Frazier looks at Axiom. Axiom looks at Frazier. And Frazier goes, let's do it. So I was like, oh, my God, we're getting a tag title match. MSK versus Axiom and Nathan Frazier tonight. And so then Axiom and Nathan Frazier look at him. They go, well, there's two of us and three of you. So which two are going to be in the match tonight? And and Trey actually says, or no, Wentz. He goes, I don't know if you know this or not. We're the rascals. You're getting all three of us. And so, so then Frazier's like, oh, a six man? Okay, we'll get a partner. And then like... The, the rascals are all happy and they leave. And I was like, hold on a second. You were just <laughs> offered a world tag team title shot and you talked your way into a non-title six man? I watched it again. I was like, I, am I imagining this? But no, they, they decided they just wanted a six man, not a championship match. And so they had the six man and my God, this match was awesome. And in the end, they did have Wentz get the pin. So we are getting a tag title match. Which, that was an awful lot of work to get what you had already. But man, this match was awesome. So I would highly recommend the main event. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button. And you'll never miss a video again.